Now, last year, I reviewed the HP NVX 360 15 2-in-1 convertible, one of the more popular devices of 2021, at least here on my channel. The videos did well. The people bought them in droves. They couldn't get enough of them. Unfortunately, there were supply issues due to the pandemic. Now, fast forward to 2021, about three weeks ago, I unboxed and got my first look at the 2021 model. Now, of course, this was a redesigned model without the numpad, more spacious keyboard, and it also is a little bit lighter, a little bit more svelte than the 2020 model. I've been putting it through its paces for the past three weeks, and here is my review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Envy X360 15 running the Ryzen 7 5700U processor. Coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from HP. Just looking at the comments from my unboxing video that I did of this laptop a few weeks ago really shows you how polarizing the removal of the numpad has been. What's interesting is that since I released my unboxing video about three weeks ago, HP has indeed released a SKU with the numpad. In fact, it's the old body style with the updated Ryzen processor. Now with last year's body style, it will be a little bit heavier than this year's redesign, which comes in a little bit lighter, a little bit more svelte. Now, as I mentioned in my unboxing video, this has the Nightfall black color, and I really like it. It's a sleek and modern look. It also has a premium all-metal design. This is a really nicely made laptop, and as you can see, it looks good too. Now, at 4.11 pounds or 1.86 kilograms, this is definitely lighter than the 2020 model. Now, I went over the ports in my unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, on the left side is a USB-A port, an HDMI 2.0B port, a USB-C port that does data charge display out, and a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack. On the right side is a full-size SD card reader, and yes, the card sit flush with the device. That is always good. A second USB-A port, and finally, your power port. Of note, there's no USB 4 port, and there's no Thunderbolt 4 port, because this is running the AMD Ryzen processor. But nonetheless, it's a really good port selection. Now, when it comes to performance, the Ryzen 7 5700U actually performed really nicely, especially when you look at the Geekbench multi-core score. That's where you see it really shine with a really high score of 7104. That is excellent. When it comes to single core score, it's still good, but not quite as good as you find in other laptops, including the Intel 11 Gen Tiger Lake processors. But when you compare it to the M1 Max, as we see here, the single core score is not going to be quite as good. And as you can see, the M1 one max did even better on the multi-core score although this held its own so very interesting results when you compare it to the other chips but there's no question this is a very good chipset and when it comes to gaming, well, you can definitely get playable frame rates if you put it on 1080p high settings. You can play GTA 5, CSGO, Fortnite, FIFA 21, Call of Duty Warzone, and the like. There are definitely playable frame rates on these more popular titles. Again, this is not a dedicated gaming laptop, but if you want to play the game here and there, you definitely can do it on this laptop. There's no problem in that regard. Now, I'm really impressed with the thermals. When I ran my Prime 95 stress test, I saw the CPU would turbo boost to 3.67 gigahertz and have a core temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. That would last for a few seconds, but then it would drop down to 3.36 gigahertz to maintain a cooler temperature of 75 degrees throughout. I didn't see a lot of thermal throttling, if any, and this is going to be great for long-term productivity work. And if you're going to do gaming on this, this is going to be great when it comes to the thermals. And during that Prime 95 stress test, surface temperatures never got overly hot maintaining a pretty cool surface temperature and that's been pretty good now you will notice the fans will kick in under heavy load but not too loud not too obnoxious and that is good and I saw a big improvement when it comes to battery life. The NVX 360 here for 2021 did 13 hours and 4 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. That's better than the 9 hours and 7 minutes that I got with last year's 2020 model. A nice year-to-year -year improvement when it comes to battery life.
Now they do supply you with a 65 watt power adapter. It uses the barrel pin connector and it only takes about an hour and a half to give you a full charge. And that's pretty good. But remember, you can also charge via USB-C as well. Now, as I mentioned in my unboxing video, there are two SKUs when it comes to the display. There's a 250 nit display in terms of the brightness, and then there's the 400 nit display. I chose the 400 nit display because I like to have my displays as bright as possible. And I measured 401 nits in my testing, which is good. Although you'll notice that it is a glossy display, you will notice some glare and reflections. And that's something to keep in mind. But what I did notice some really excellent black levels, a really low score of 0.23, which is excellent, really good white points, excellent contrast and a low delta e score of 1.03 making this a very color accurate display and it also covers the color gamut very well you're looking at 96 percent srgb 71 percent adobe rgb 71 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 66 percent ntsc making this a good display for content creators when it comes to Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And I also didn't notice any PWM or pulse width modulation. I know some people are sensitive to that and I didn't detect any on this display. Now, HP managed to slim the bezels down a little bit. Here, you're looking at an 89% screen to body ratio, giving it a nice sleek and modern look. Not bad, especially for a 15 inch two in one convertible. Now this still retains a 16 to nine aspect ratio. I was hoping they would move to a 16 to 10, which seems to be the trend here in 2021. Unfortunately, that's not what we get. Now 16 to nine is very good for consuming media. That is well optimized for 16 to nine display, but 16 to 10 to me is better for productivity. You'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. So this is the front facing camera on the HP NVX 360, the 15 inch here for 2021. Unfortunately, this has a 720p webcam. I was hoping for a 1080p. We don't get it this year. Good for Zoom, good for Skype. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, how does it sound? Are the microphones good? Let me know. Now, the camera is not Windows Hello, meaning it's not an infrared camera, but you can use the fingerprint scanner. It's located in the keyboard, registering my finger each and every time I used it. It was fast. It was responsive. Now, taking a look at the internals, you notice that the placement of the fans is a little bit different this time around. You also notice that it does retain that same 51 watt hour battery, although we're seeing a nice year to year increase in battery life, as I mentioned earlier in this video. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the RAM is user upgradable. There are two RAM slots and there's also the SSD that's user upgradable as well. I like the ability to change this out later on and upgrade it as the user. That is a good thing. And also some other good news, the Wi-Fi card is also user upgradable. So if you want to upgrade it down the road, although this is Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5, both are working really well. Now, the million dollar question is, are those grills next to the keyboard speaker grills or are they air vents? Well, unfortunately, they are air vents and they do help with the cooling and it's actually been pretty good. However, they are not top firing speakers. What you do get on this are downward firing speakers. They're audio by Bang & Olufsen and they use HP Audio Boost and they sound pretty good. Filling up a room rather nicely with decent mids, good volume, and there is a hint of bass. Not bad for the speakers. Now, this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put this into the different modes. The tent mode is great for watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube, and the same could be said of the stand mode. Now, of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. This is great for use with the pen, and the pen, by the way, is included at no additional cost. It uses the Entrick pen technology, or as they are now calling it, the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0 or MPP 2.0, good for taking notes, good for sketching an artwork. Now, I'm not a digital artist, so don't take this for what it is, and I like the fact that it's there, you don't have to pay extra for it. A nice value add proposition. And for those wondering, yes, you can charge it via USB-C. No more hunting for those quadruple A batteries, which are sometimes hard to find and can get expensive over the long haul. And for those wondering, no, you cannot open the lid with one finger since this is a two-in-one convertible. The hinge is not designed to do that. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, there are some changes year to year, as you can see from the 2020 model to the 2021 model as we have here. Now, the big differences here, of course, is now they put the fingerprint scanner within the keyboard, as I showed you earlier, and you have the two air vents next to the keyboard. Those are not speaker grills, as I mentioned earlier. And as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, really good tactile feedback, good key travel on it, very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. And I didn't feel like my fingers were bottoming out, really good typing experience. Now it's also a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. 
Okay, let's talk about the removal of the numpad. Now, some people are happy about it. Some people are upset. A very polarizing comments, as I mentioned earlier in my unboxing video. But the benefits, of course, is that you're going to get a more centered touchpad. You no longer have it off to the side, as you see here on the 2020 model. It is now centered. You also get a more spacious typing experience on the 2021 model. And the other thing you'll notice is a 19% bigger touchpad. It's a precision touchpad. It's more spacious, as I mentioned, and it's really responsive with two fingers scrolling that's buttery smooth and all the windows 10 gestures are working as you'd expect okay let's wrap it all up what do i think about the hp nvx 360 15 here for 2021 well i really do like it i like its redesign here although some people are upset about the removal of the numpad and i think i can understand that but of course the benefits are you're going to get a more spacious comfortable keyboard to type on and you'll have a centered touchpad which is also 19 percent larger than the 2020 model now the performance has been great with that ryzen 7 5700u yes it is still based on the zen 2 architecture but it is a nice little improvement over last year's model and you also get really good thermals it stays quiet it stays cool it's been really good in terms of this revamped thermal solution now as far as the battery life you're seeing a nice year-to-year -year increase over the battery life all day battery life i got 13 plus hours on my test that is indeed really good now i love the fact that the ram ssd and wi-fi card are all user upgradable down the road that is a great option to have i love the fact that the pen is included at no additional cost the negatives here, it's still a 720p webcam here in 2021, which to me is unacceptable. There's no 4K option as far as the display is concerned. And yes, it is still a 16 to 9 aspect ratio where the trend here for 2021 has been a move to the 16 to 10. And yes, the numpad is gone. A lot of people will be upset about that. I like what they did here, folks. I like it so much. I'm going to give this a score of 96%, making the HP NVX 360 15 here for 2021. My editor's choice for the 15-inch convertible laptop so far, again, here for 2021. Definitely making it worth your money. So what do you think about the NVX 360 15 here for 2021 with this new redesign? A lot of controversy with the removal of the numpad, as I mentioned. You can get last year's model with the updated processor, again, a little bit heavier. And of course, the numpad will be there as well as the off-centered touchpad. Some people may not like that. Some people don't care. Again, there are more choices here, and that's always good. But as far as this redesigned one here for 2021, performance was good. Battery life was an improvement. The thermals were improvement as well. I highly recommend it. In fact, it got my editor's choice here so far for 2021. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, links for both types of model with or without the numpad will be in the description below. If those of you are interested in checking it out, it'll be in the description below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.